Welcome back, you guys. My name is Kane, and let's talk about Felipe Lopez, the number one high school prospect after his senior year in 1994. He was dubbed the Spanish Michael Jordan when he was dominating New York City high school basketball. One high school sports writer puts it, Felipe was the most hyped player to ever come out of New York City up to that point. There was more buzz surrounding Felipe than Lou Alcindor and Kenny Anderson when they played high school basketball. If this is your first time watching, definitely subscribe. I like to talk about NBA basketball and old basketball stories. Let's try to hit 800 likes on the first day on this and let's talk about his story. Felipe Lopez was born in Santiago, the second largest city in the Dominican Republic. Baseball was the sport everyone played and his dad tried pushing baseball onto Felipe. His dad played amateur baseball in the Dominican Republic. Near Felipe's house, there was a basketball court and he would play every day after school there. That's where Felipe got his start of playing the game he loves and soon he would be doing it on a level where he would be recognized nationally. The dream for his mom and dad was to bring the whole family to America and when he turned the age of 14, Felipe immigrated with his parents and three siblings to the South Bronx in 1989. Felipe played at Rice High School, which used to be one of the powerhouse basketball schools in New York City. He was playing against guys like Stephon Marbury, Rafer Alston, Speedy Claxton, and God Shamgod. Felipe was a 6 foot 5, 190 pound slashing guard who was very fast and could get to the rim at ease. Scouts loved his motor and how hard he would play the whole game. Before the start of his junior year in 1992, he went to the ABCD camp, a basketball camp where all the top recruits would go to over the summer and play. At this one, the other star players that were there were Rashid Wallace and Jason Kidd, and Felipe would end up beating them out for the MVP honors. The demand to see Felipe in the Dominican community was so large that Lopez's high school coach scheduled one game in the Washington Heights so that the community could fit into a larger venue. For those that do not know, Washington Heights is a neighborhood in Manhattan that has a very large Dominican population. They showed up to the game in numbers. The crowds at Felipe's games were crazy. One of the players who played against Rice High School in the 90s said that Felipe's games were like a carnival. His story up to that point was really powerful because here's this kid who comes to America the summer before his eighth grade season, can't speak English that well, and within a few years, he is the best high school basketball player in New York City. People in the Hispanic community saw him as a hero. Allen Iverson was considered the number one player in the country at the time, but as soon as Iverson was out for his senior year because of the bowling alley incident, some of the media placed Felipe as the number one player over Iverson. Felipe and Rice High School won the league championship in his senior year. He won every award that year that you could imagine. Gatorade player of the year, USA Today Player of the Year, and McDonald's All-American Game MVP. One scout says, Felipe was doing things on the floor that people have never seen before in New York City. Whatever team that was next on the schedule had no chance of stopping Felipe Lopez. For Felipe's college basketball decision, he chose to go to St. John's University because it was in New York City and he wanted to help bring the school back to the days when Chris Mullen and St. John's got to the Final Four and won the Big East Championship. Before Lopez played one minute of a college basketball game, Sports Illustrated put him on the cover of their magazine and started the hype train for his freshman year. He was the guy who was going to help bring the Big East back to stardom. Felipe Mania at St. John's got even crazier once this magazine cover hit the newsstands. St. John's hadn't had a star recruit in years and the interest to see him was huge. St. John's basketball's first open practice was broadcasted by ESPN. Over 5,000 fans showed up to watch. He would get asked to sign autographs in class. He was the star on campus. When retired baseball player Alex Rodriguez was 20 years old, he showed up to a St. John's basketball team meal just so he could meet Felipe. A-Rod is also Dominican, was from the Washington Heights, and was starstruck when he met Felipe. The first time Iverson and Felipe Lopez played against each other in their freshman year, Georgetown won 88-71, but it was a good battle between the star freshmen. Iverson had 33 and Lopez had 28. But as the season went along, the hype in the crowd that followed Felipe began to slow down once the team could not bring St. John's University back to their stardom in the 1980s. Lopez led St. John's with 17.8 points per game on 41% shooting, but the team went 14-14. and 14. His sophomore year and junior years were the same result. 
St. John's had a record below 500 and missed the NCAA tournament. The unrealistic high expectations for him at St. John's began to take a little bit of a toll on him. His career just was not going as everyone thought it would. Felipe said losing took a toll on him and the joy of basketball was kind of gone. He says he feels like he got isolated after the cover, like it was Felipe versus the Big East. Finally, in his senior year, Felipe was able to lead St. John's to the NCAA tournament, but they lost in the first round. He led the team in scoring that year with 17 points per game. Lopez is St. John's' fourth leading scorer all time, and he has the most three-pointers made in a season for a St. John's player. He declared for the NBA draft. Even though the hype for Felipe Lopez went down, he was still seen as a player that could do well in the NBA because of his athletic ability. His main flaws were that he struggled to create offense for others. Felipe had a lot of games in college where he had more turnovers than assists and his jump shot was not that reliable. The Spurs took him 24th overall in the 1998 NBA draft, but they shipped him to the Grizzlies right away. He played two seasons for the Grizzlies before being traded to the Wizards, the last two teams he would play for before his NBA career would end due to a knee injury were the Mavericks and the Timberwolves. In the 2002 NBA preseason with the Timberwolves, he charged into Paul Pierce, twisted awkwardly, and tore his ACL and MCL. Felipe's final averages for his five years in the NBA were 5.8 points, 2.4 rebounds on 43% shooting. His basketball career did not turn out as many predicted, but Lopez has been doing very positive things with his time after basketball. He's an ambassador for NBA Cares, he launched his own foundation. Dikembe Mutombo calls him Saint Felipe because of his humanitarian work. He still keeps up with the NBA today, and his three favorite players are LeBron, Curry, and Westbrook. Lopez has no regrets about how his career went and just appreciates where he is at now and how basketball was able to elevate his community to another stage. Felipe says, sometimes I get asked how things would have changed without the cover, and I don't even bother to think about it. No what ifs. I'm proud of that cover, I had a great run in this city. And that is the story for Felipe Lopez, one of the most hyped up players in New York City and just the second Dominican to ever play in the NBA. Shout out to Jermel Field and Christopher Johnson for suggesting this video topic. If you made it to the end of the video, shout out to you, subscribe if you have not already, and I'll see you guys in my next video.